Hi everyone, I am Alex and I'm Mikhaila and welcome back to the series Computers of Chernobyl, a series where we explore and study the history of using of computers and the data processing in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. In the comments of our previous episodes, many of you asked to talk a little bit more about the Soviet PDP-11 computers. So here we are, this episode is for you. We will talk about this beauty. It is DVK-3M, which stands for Dialog Computer Complex. So this computer is the part of a very large line of Soviet machines compatible with DEC PDP-11. And it won't be overestimation if I say that it is hard to call any other computer more Chernobyl than the VK of all kind. It's uh, even up to present day is possible to find remains of them across all the zone in a very destroyed condition. But this one is intact, so it's gonna be really interesting today. Before we continue, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We will have a lot of episodes about all this hardware. But there is much more. On our Patreon page you can find a full version of this video and a lot of technical and historical insights and other epic content about Chernobyl computers. Link is in the description below. The story of the family of the VK starts in uh, 1981, when appeared the very first machine called just the VK. And uh, actually all of them were planned as uh, standalone places for programmers, uh, for various research works and so on, as well as they could be used as a terminal machines for the local networks. But contrary to their original prototypes, uh, they were made on a totally different element base and used more highly integrated microchips which we will see very soon. We have this amazing set of books about Soviet computers, which we also used in our previous episode about YES 1841. By the way, if you didn't see that, check them, we have them on our channel. So in a, one of them uh, there is a good overview of different generations of DVK, and all of them are based on Electronica MS-1201 single board computing unit of different subtypes with different capabilities and interfaces, all of them running on a K1801 VM processors. This unit was installed in the crate of MPE bus, which was an analog of the original Q bus, along with the other boards forming the actual DVK machine. However, depending on the generation, they can be built in very, very different way. Most of DVK-1 and DVK-2 consisted of the two separate blocks. One of them housed a crate with the computing and also normally controller boards. And to all of this you could connect a floppy disk drive and a second crate with the display. That second part with a terminal was called 15E00013, mm -hmm. well, or its popular name was Fryazinsky Terminal because it was designed in the Russian town Fryazina. In Chernobyl the DVK2 were very widely used. It is enough to just quickly look into the literature from the 80s to find some good examples. Well, for example, they were used in spectrometry complexes for analyzing surface contamination or in studies of the cooling pond contamination. And, were actu and we actually have some, let's say, screenshots of the output of the custom software. These computers were integrated with various detectors using Kamak and distributed the data to Soviet PDP-11 mainframes SMFM. Okay, you know, we are not super big channel, so let it be so. Uh, if this video will get 100,000 views, in this case, um, we will bring to our studio a real SMVM mainframe, which is also PDP-11, just Soviet, and we will tell you a lot about it. In an addition, this will make our little engineer pretty happy. You see this pose. No. From these older generations of DVK, we have only a keyboard, which requires a slight repair and cleanup, and also the part of a Fryazina terminal. If you want to help us to restore the terminal, join us on our Patreon. This will very much help our project. And now it's time to look on our today's hero. Same as DVK2, this very Third generation computers were also widely used in research works in the zone. For example, for analysis of fallout of the closest area to the nuclear power plant or in radiobiological studies. However, this machine is very different from its previous generations. First, 
This is a monoblock, uh, which looks like a system unit and a display. But, well, that's only partly true, because the actual computer is in the upper part and the bottom one houses the power unit, the disk drives and a hard drive. To all this you connect this amazing keyboard called Electronica MS7004. And at first glance it looks as a pretty modern one, but it is Yitsuken, not QWERTY, and it has this lid that, if opened, reveals a lot of LEDs for the terminal functionality. You connect it using a DIN connector on the back. There is also a connector for IRPR interface, which is in fact is an inverter Centronics and also a telegraph channel you can use for communication. The power has been connected using such a star connector, which gives a really good contact. These connectors you may often find in military computers. For example, if you remember the first episode of this series, we mentioned there ES1845, a military Soviet PC, so most of connectors of that machine were of this kind. I must say it's very neatly made, because to disassemble all of that you need to remove just kind of 10 screws. And moreover, there are special covers that you can open to access that or another part. For example, on the back you can easily access the connectors of the crate and the disk drives uh, or uh, the power supply. The power supply actually is very huge and it has even such diagnostic indicators. The same is on the top of the computer, because, uh, because there are such two leads, and if you open the bigger one, you can access the display, and from here is visible the Qbus crate with the installed boards. The second lead allows to access the boards directly. Well, to this we will come just a little bit later, for now let's look to the front panel. Here we have a power toggle switch and three control buttons, Next, uh, there is a place for the 5-inch hard drive, uh, which we honestly do not have yet at the moment, and two 5-inch floppy disk drives, for which there is a special controller in the crate. So now let's open it all and take a little look inside. So the upper cover holds on the just two screws, which are pretty conveniently accessible from the top, and as we can see, inside uh, there is a lot of space. A display used here is similar to a standard MS6105, practically identical to the same in a triangle-shaped casing, even the board is almost the same. This particular one has unfortunately a factory origin trouble with the high voltage transformer, so we will need to change it, uh, because we plan to start this computer so we can see it in action. Therefore, do not forget to subscribe in order not to miss it. If we turn the computer around, we can better see the MPE crate. And this closest board to us is the single board computing unit with notably giant processor called K1801 VM3. Well, frankly speaking, this is the biggest Soviet ship we have seen and uh, reminds on an old joke from the times that Soviet Union was the state where everything was the biggest. It had the biggest factories, uh, biggest spaceships, uh, biggest fields and the biggest microchips. Let's look closer to the board, so we will carefully disconnect these multiple ribbon cables and take each board out. And once we remove them, we can see these connectors, and a little bit later we will take out entire crate and you will see one little secret. But for now, like this video and stay tuned. In this very machine we have three boards, actually very nice set. One of them, as we say, it is a single board computer unit, another big one is a floppy controller and the third one is a graphic card. And there is one more empty place where you can install uh, one large board if you need. The computing unit here is Electronica MS1201.03, which had already 248 kilobytes of RAM, and uh, that's uh, these lines of chips. The board is pretty large, and it's pretty bigger than any from ES1841, and it has uh, kind of blade-like connectors. For peripherals, they use these very nice connectors that fix the ribbon cables on position pretty securely. 
and overall the toggles to install the board in this crate are metal and they are more sturdy so all in all this gives kind of more serious feeling than yes boards a processor k1801 vm3 is that big that here a custom made panel for it has been used and this processor can address up to 4 megabytes of memory could make 100,000 multiplications per second or 1.5 million of adding operations per second having 72 built-in commands that can be expanded if used together with a special coprocessor. This is the floppy disk controller board to which are connected the two 5-inch floppy drives. This large board is a color graphic controller. It has own processor, it is that white chip. And on board uh, there is 128 kilobytes of RAM. Like, frankly speaking, uh, we for now are not real experts on DVK, so, you know, when we dismantled this computer, we noticed that a ribbon cable from the Telegraph channel um, has been plugged in one of these very board connectors. Well, it seems for us uh, there had to be some separate board for that instead, and uh, if you know whether it was a factory mistake, just let us know in the comments, we will really appreciate that. Technically, this board allows to achieve one of few modes, on 60Hz, 800 to 242 bits for colors, or 400 to 240 uh, for bits, it uh, will be 16 colors from a 64 color palette. And if we go for 30 Hz, that will be also 800 to 480 points, 2 bits with 4 colors, or 400 to 480, 4 bits, also with 16 colors from 64 color palette. To the display, all of this is connected using a thin ribbon cable. And this board, unfortunately, is glitchy straight from the factory, so you need to work on it. If you wish to help us with this and get a backstage repair, don't forget to join us on our Patreon. Alright, so now let's take a look to the crate. To release it, all what is needed is to remove just two screws and these connectors of the power supply. Then we can carefully lift it up. By the way, connectors are pretty interesting as they are rarely used in computing machines uh, and you can find them in other industrial equipment. For example, if you watch the video about the Soviet weighing scale Dina on our channel, there they are in variety, even forming the actual crate, so don't forget to check it out. Once we remove the crate, there become visible this warning on the power supply. It says, attention, the elements of the unit have uh, 1000 volts voltage. Hmm. Interesting. So this is what the crate looks like. Here are two powerful industrial fans, and you remember earlier we told, uh, would you like to have a secret? So what looks as a stack of connectors, in fact, is one giant single connector. It's enormously big and literally stuffed with gold. That's the reason why it's so hard to find Devika alive now. Um, so this forms the MPE bus. MPE actually stands for Broadband Serial Interface, but in Russian language acronym will be MPE. And electrically and functionally it's analog of the DEC Q bus, but it has different mechanical parameters. So there is, a, for example, a different step between its pins, and pinout is different as well. And also the step between the actual socket boards is bigger in MPE than in the Q bus. So all in all what we are going to do next is to repair the display and the graphic controller and we want to start it all to show you in the action. Maybe even with some Chernobyl software if we'll find some. If you want to help us with uh, the restoration of this, join us on our Patreon. There will be not only big help for this project, but also very lot informations about previous computers of Chernobyl. So that's it for today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and see you next time.